Kana Gitbehi and welcome to Swangan. I'm your host, Dennis Allen. Every summer, Inuvialuit cannot wait to head out to their whale camps. People like Roy Ipana and Marine Rogers head out to Baby Island to harvest the beluga muktuk. This summer, our cameras were there. Welcome to Swangan, our strength, right here on APTN. Island here was abandoned ever since I could remember. About 10, 15 years ago, those guys moved over here. We used to come to this island just to get wood for cooking muktuk. That's all it was. And uh, get some geese, so you see some geese on this point. Then Walter and Maureen moved here, and then Hugh, and lots of people followed. And it's a good place. Most people were over at Kendall, that's where James and oh, okay. Hank's got their camp there. When I was a young lad, that's where we stayed. And Big Jim Rogers' family, and in the earlier days, there was well, 50, 60 tents there long ago. They, that would be the only camp around here. We used to all stay together. So all the men would hunt together, go out there, hunt together, and shared everything. We came with schooner and some small boats. But most of the time, we, when I was a kid, we came with a schooner. Well, they called it Ogivik and uh, Sea Queen. That was Juicy Puppik's one, and uh, Ogivik was Old Harry's one. And they take people down, mostly family, and jump in there, and we all come down here and stay down here till a couple of days before school starts. You know, you know never rush them days. Like nowadays, you rush, rush down here and rush home. You get your whale, cook it, and you're gone. And that's the part I don't like. You, know? you should come down here and enjoy it, stay down here. If it is up to me, I stay here from the end of June till freeze up. But I ha unfortunately, I have to work. And my wife loves it here, I love it here. I can't, always can't wait to come here. Especially on a beautiful day like this, you can't ask for anything more, man. Them guys, them older guys used to whale, eh? not us, us, we were too young. We always waited at home and those guys, it must have been pretty good whale. I never witnessed it, but they used to get whale right from the schooner. They'd come home sometime with three, four whales, five, and you could tell how many they got because they used to have little flags on the mast. If they got three flags on the mast, they got three whales. So all the women knew what to expect when they were coming home and get ready for work. Boy, when we used to cut them up long ago, there was four or five whales, and you would work half the day, and everybody would work. It was real, some days it was real togetherness. Nobody staying here, nobody staying over there. We did everything together. But now you got fast boats, you could just go here, go there, whatever, you know? It's different now. Not like 30 years, 40 years ago anyway. We'd all stay at one camp, share everything. And But nowadays, if you're not here in six hours, that's too long. It used to take us three days to come down here. And we never complained a bit. Like we, we were so happy we were coming whaling and spend the summer here. We, did, you know, we didn't know no other life. We'd come out of residential school and we can't wait to come here. So we, Stay up all night and hunt all day and whatever. Mm. You're free, like, you know, you, when, when I come here, I feel completely free. Like, there's nothing tying me down. I do what I want. Nobody tells me what to do. Yeah. It's just a beautiful place to be. 
Everything's out and open, boy, that's what I like. Mm -hmm. There's no bureaucracy here, nothing. There's nobody here higher up the ladder than anybody else, the way I look at it. I think there's a couple of people that, that come down here every year, but the price of gas now, holy smokes, and the lack of jobs in the new week, yeah. and around the area, there's, that's prevent some people from coming down. But I tell you one thing for sure, you use your gas rather sparingly around here. You don't run like I used to run around all over the place. Go, you know, go for a picnic, go drive around, look around, show my kid the country. But it's it's getting a little harder to do that because of the price of gas and the amount that you got to haul down here. And you know, you try to keep most of it for hunting whale and like getting water and wood. But it does prevent some people from coming down. It's dollar forty-five a liter up in New York. You get a forty-five gallon of gas. That's about putting you four hundred bucks. Yeah. I'm wondering if it'll make people start sharing again, though. Maybe people start sharing boats. And well, first of all, you got to find a big schooner for sure. That would be nice. That was my dream, you know. When I worked for town, I worked there for a few years, and I was gonna—I still could retire, but I was gonna retire and buy a schooner. So I, by told my wife, my kids, are, my grandchildren are all going to want to come with me for sure. And I said, the price of gas is going to be astronomical. So I could just throw everything in my schooner and tow my boat down, my speedboat. Stay down here and use the boat, my speedboat for emergency to go back to New York. And I think it might come to that. Yeah. Yeah. Go back to the old times. Like A schooner can take you know, six, seven families, yeah. if you do it right. Mm -hmm. You know, put them all in there, all their supplies. The government used to bring people down here, the social services. I remember when I was a kid, we stayed at Echolok Big Harbor. There, there were probably about 15, 20 families that the government brought down here. When we come back, more from Baby Island. You're watching Swang on Our Strength, right here on APTN. Welcome back to Swang on Our Strength and more from Baby Island, right here on APTN. Long ago, since I remember, they used to just have locks for these locks. And they never have tables like this. They sit on the grass and on the locks they cut everything. And they're so neat. And they don't just make them small like this. They make them long and men's never work. Just the women's work. All they did is hunt and pull the oil up. That's it. And now how do men help? They just hunt and pull the oil up, and then as we take over. Yeah. That's, I like that. I don't you like, like that. Men's interfere. It's better if you work by yourself. It's better if you have your own stage. That way you don't. Yeah. Don't have to say this is mine. It's not the way to do it or anything. Nowadays we got easy life.
Who taught you how to cut my truck, Marie? I learned it by myself. Mm. I used to be, I just cook when I was growing up. Only when I got married to my husband, it's the only time I tried to work at 12. Mm. I don't even know how to cut the head. I don't even know how to cut the tail. I don't know what to start from. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you do the first time? With my sister was my teacher. Uh, my older sister. Yeah. Because I never watch when, they, when I was growing up, all I do is just cook and watch my brothers and sister. Mm -hmm. Younger sister. <clears throat> they you do lots of stuff with this this part here. They make a, a, when you make shoes, they use that for the bottom. Oh. They take all the white stuff off, yeah. and you eat that white stuff, you dry it. Yeah. It's best. We never waste nothing long ago when I was growing up because we used to have dogs. That's what do. Old Harris, big barge, and he used to have a schooner. He used to take about 100 dogs, 48, 45 gallons, a muktuk. Lots of dry meat, general waste, nothing long ago. They make little strips and they make prunes and put it in the stomach. They used to clean the stomach and blow it up and make it for, for berry picking or anything, raw muck duck. That's right, hey, those are They don't nasty. waste. I know you don't throw bones away, the dogs eat them. We hang these up about two or three days, but if it's too warm, no. you hang it for two days. So after they hang them, you cook them, and you, you cook them right in that tub there? We got six, ah. 45 there. Yeah. You got a hard, sharp knife to have work at the hoils. What's the best way to have okra? Some people have it with cabbage and vegetables. You like it like that? Yeah, everything. <laughs> you could uh, you could pick uh, roots from from when the leaves grow. You could put in your okra, or if you get. Blue, black, I mean yellow berries, you just cook them and put them in the rock. Mm. Could stay there forever. Mm. And you long ago people used to try to eat good only on Sundays. Out in a bush. Now it's modern world we do everything. We work on Sundays. I call everybody famous when they catch whale. <laughs> <laughs> as long as they don't try to get so much at one time. Make your work easier when they take, like if I finish now, my husband get another whale. It will be just right off. You used to have to skin muskrats and stuff, like 70 a day, that kind of thing? 150, 300 if there's lots. Oh my goodness. <laughs> First time I ever lose in rat skinning. But I win this year. Every year I win in carnival. Mm. And I go hunting with my husband all the time. That's how come I like to. First, she's clean skinner. My daughter.
Yeah, but I'm not take that. Yeah, that's the old scar. Yeah. Look. Yeah. Oh, it's cut it in. No, it's good. No. Just cut off. Uh, just get, cut it out and put it in my pail. Huh? Okay. Just cut it off. Yeah, it must be mine. Must be just about that. Oh. I let. Uh, hey. These two. She eat, I've been forgetting her fish too at her. Oh. Somebody been we, living in her. We set the we set the fish net? We set the net, we got one white fish and one very <laughs> oh. two days the boat was sitting up. And my two she can't catch. She said she got two. They got finally got one white fish and one little pony. Oh. Yeah, that's a little scar that one I look at she. Yeah, yeah. Must be from polar bear. Something. When we come back, more from Baby Island. You're watching Swang on Our Strength right here on APTN. Welcome back to Swang and Our Strength and more from Baby Island, right here on EPTN. Who taught, who taught you how to do this, Freddie? To make this here? Yeah. Oh, I did. actually, this is the first one I'm ever building here. But then just to look at other structures around here, it's, it's actually not that hard. It's rather simple. It's really the first time, what? eh? You guys yeah. are doing really good. <laughs> well, I know if Dennis did. Dennis must have done it before. Uh, but this is the first one I'm ever building. So tell us a little bit about whaling, whaling season. Whaling season? Yeah, what you do and... No, nah, there's all... There's a whole bunch of work that they always have to be done here. Yeah. Yeah. So... First there's a... There's a... When you first come down, you get your... Uh, like what I'm doing now, you get your stage and your table and then you get all your logs like that piled up. So when you get the when you when you get down here the first time, and you get all prepared for like this. This is all new new stuff that I'm doing here, really. What's the table for? <clears throat> the table at uh, after you lay the muck to go in the logs there, and then you let them dry for a couple of days, and then, rather than working on an un unstable area, you put them on a table. Of course, nice and flat, and then you got you got a nice even place to work, and then. And what's the what's the stage for? The stage is uh, it's for either hanging the dry meat, but the the one we're the one I'm building now, this is for hanging the uh, the muktuk. <clears throat> after we uh, like after we dry them on the logs, and then we put them on a the table that we're gonna build, and then we cut the. We cut some of the fat off, and then we cut them in uh, cubes or squares or whatever, whatever you want to call it. And then this is what the stage is for, is to hang it up for a couple of days, and then it dries out. And then after that, it's ready for a cook pot. For a cook pot, I don't know what you call it. So the ones that you hang on the stage, you must cook those? Because yeah. I know oh. some you don't cook them. Oh, there's some people that, uh, uh, some people that they don't, so there's some people that don't cook theirs, really. Some people like it raw, bring it back to camp. Yeah. And then they, they make something like, like a, we call it wheelock. It's a raw, raw muktuk. And then that, uh, that's a sort of a delicacy. Uh, like what Maureen was making earlier. Oh, yeah. She said she only make it from the flippers. <laughs> yeah, it's mostly, but, but uh, you could, from the from the backbone, or from the flippers, but uh, that that's what they both prefer is from flippers and the backbone. Most, the other parts are on the body there. It's always either cooked or just left raw, and then they age it, and then that's what they that's 
Some people don't like it aged too much. I'm a, a veterinary pathologist with the provincial government, the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Fisheries in Abbotsford, British Columbia. And since 1998, I've had an interest in marine mammal diseases and have been actively involved in disease outbreak investigations on the West Coast, primarily with whales and harbor seals, but we do a, a number of different species. And what was found over the last couple of years is that these whales appear to have exposure to a bacteria known as brucella. And this is an organism that we typically recognize in veterinary medicine with causing abortion and infertility, a variety of problems in cattle in particular, but also in pigs. Many of the hunters in this area would be familiar with this disease. It actually causes quite enlargement of joints in hunted caribou. So the, um, many of the people here are at least familiar with the condition. I was invited to come up because we're very interested in this particular bacteria um, and trying to characterize what sort of diseases or how it may contribute to, say, infertility in the beluga whales and its potential risk for transmission to humans who may be um, exposed to it. And it doesn't seem like it's very highly transmissible, at least at this point. Certainly there's some evidence in the literature which would suggest that humans can be exposed and infected, but it seems to occur very rarely. The cooking of the flesh uh, destroy the bacteria? It should, in fact, do that, yes. Our concern would be if it's aerosolized and mm -hmm. um, as, they're preparing the, as they're preparing the muktuk and cutting the strips of blubber and, and skin off, you know, yeah. that would be of concern. But as long as people are cautious and wash their hands, which many of these people do as they're, as they're completing the, okay. the work process. <laughs> Well, that was our show for this week. We hope you enjoyed it. Kuyanak, Dautuk Ta Kafi, Swangan Mik. Until next time, I'm your host, Dennis Allen. Ilani Lu. Jack. Perfect.